Hey, math fanatics and curious minds. Have you ever looked at something that seemed simple only for it to reveal a mind-bending contradiction? Today, we're diving into one of those fascinating head-scratchers, the staircase paradox. It's a classic example of how our intuition about geometry can sometimes lead us astray, and it has some surprising connections to other famous mathematical puzzles. Imagine you're at the bottom left corner of a perfect unit square, and you want to reach the top right corner. The shortest path, as Pythagoras famously taught us, is the diagonal straight line. If the sides of the square are each one unit long, then by the Pythagorean theorem, the length of this diagonal is square root of 1 square plus 1 square, which is equal to square root of 2, which is approximately 1.414 units. Simple, right? Now, let's try a different approach. Instead of a direct diagonal, let's build a staircase. We'll take small steps, alternating between moving horizontally and vertically. Imagine taking one unit right, and then one unit up. The total path length is 1 plus 1 equals 2 units. What if we divide each of those large steps in half? We go 0 0.5 units right, 0 0.5 units up, 0.5 units right, and 0.5 units up. The total path length is still two units. Let's keep dividing these steps. Imagine taking thousands, millions, even an infinite number of tiny horizontal and vertical segments. Each time, the staircase gets smoother, looking more and more like the diagonal line. Our intuition screams, this staircase must converge to the diagonal, and its length must converge to square root of two. But here's the kicker. No matter how many steps you take, no matter how small each individual segment becomes, the total length of the staircase always remains two units. You're always covering the full horizontal distance of one unit and the full vertical distance of one unit. This is the staircase paradox. The sequence of staircase curves converges pointwise to the diagonal, meaning every point on the diagonal is approached by points on the staircases but the sequence of their lengths does not converge to the length of the diagonal. The staircase paradox isn't just about straight lines. It has a famous cousin involving circles and the mystical number pi. Recall that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Now, imagine approximating a circle using polygons. If you inscribe a square inside a circle, its perimeter will be less than the circle's circumference. As you increase the number of sides of the inscribed polygon, octagon, 16-gon, 32-gon, and so on, the polygon's perimeter gets closer and closer to the circle's circumference. This is how ancient mathematicians like Archimedes approximated pi. However, there's another way to approximate a circle, using a staircase or sawtooth pattern. Imagine drawing a square around a circle, then replacing each straight side with a series of tiny horizontal and vertical steps that roughly follow the curve of the circle. Just like our diagonal example, as you make these steps infinitesimally small, the jagged perimeter seems to visually converge to the circle. Yet, if each step always covers a horizontal and vertical segment that, when summed up, perfectly matches the width and height of the bounding box of that segment of the circle, the total perimeter will not converge to 2 pi r. Instead, it might converge to the perimeter of the bounding square, 4 times 2 r equals 8 r, or some other value, depending on how you construct this staircase. This is because the tiny horizontal and vertical segments don't lie on the curve of the circle, and their inclines don't converge to the slope of the curve. So, what's going on here? Is math broken? Not at all. The key lies in the concept of convergence and what we're actually measuring. The staircase paradox highlights a crucial distinction in mathematics. We often assume that if a sequence of shapes converges to a limit shape, then properties like their length or area will also converge. But this isn't always true, especially for properties like length, which are highly sensitive to wiggles or non-smoothness. The problem is that the staircase paths, 
even when they look smooth, are fundamentally different from the straight diagonal or the smooth curve of a circle. The staircase paths always consist of horizontal and vertical segments. Their slope is either zero or undefined. The diagonal, however, has a constant slope of one for a unit square. The slope of a circle's tangent changes continuously. In essence, the staircase never truly becomes the diagonal because its jaggedness persists at every scale, even infinitely small ones. This is a profound insight into the nature of curves and the rigorous definitions required in analysis. This paradox teaches us that for length to be a continuous function of a curve, the approximating curves need to not only converge in position but also in their smoothness or direction. When approximating a smooth curve with polygonal chains where the vertices lie on, the curve and the segment length shrink to zero. The length does converge to the arc length. The staircase problem fails this condition because its vertices are not necessarily on the diagonal, and the direction of the path never truly aligns with the diagonal's direction. The staircase paradox isn't alone in challenging our geometric intuition. In taxicab geometry, also known as Manhattan distance or L1 norm, the distance between two points isn't measured as a straight line but as the sum of the absolute differences of their coordinates. Think of a city grid. A taxi can only travel along streets, not cut diagonally through buildings. In this geometry, the diagonal distance from 0, 0 to 1, 1 is indeed 1 plus 1 equals 2. So in taxicab geometry, the staircase path is the shortest path, and its length is the same as the diagonal length. This is precisely why the staircase paradox doesn't exist in taxicab geometry. The rules of movement are different. It highlights how the definition of distance fundamentally impacts our geometric understanding. Perhaps one of the most famous analogous paradoxes is the coastline paradox, popularized by the legendary mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot, the father of fractals. This paradox observes that the length of a coastline isn't well defined. Imagine trying to measure the coastline of Great Britain. If you use a long ruler, you'll get a certain length. But if you use a shorter ruler, you can measure more of the small coves, inlets, and irregularities, and the measured length will increase. As you use infinitesimally smaller and smaller measuring units, the length of the coastline appears to increase without limit. This is because coastlines are often fractals, exhibiting self-similarity at different scales. They have a fractal dimension greater than their topological dimension, which is one for a line. The core similarity to the staircase paradox is the idea that increasing resolution doesn't lead to convergence to a fixed length, but rather an ever-increasing measurement due to persistent complexity at smaller scales. In the staircase paradox, the jaggedness never smooths out in terms of length. In the coastline paradox, the wiggliness never disappears. These paradoxes aren't flaws in mathematics, but rather powerful illustrations of its depth and the need for rigor. Our everyday intuition forged in a world of smooth, ideal shapes can sometimes falter when we delve into the infinite or highly irregular. These examples are vital for teaching fundamental concepts in real analysis and topology. They underscore why precise definitions of continuity, convergence, and measurement are so critical. Without them, our mathematical tools would lead to contradictions. So the next time you see a seemingly simple geometric problem, remember the staircase and the coastline. They're not just mathematical oddities, their invitations to think more deeply about the nature of space, dimension, and the very act of measurement itself. And who knows, maybe they'll inspire you to explore the fascinating world of fractals and beyond. If you found this mind-bending journey fascinating, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the surprising world of mathematics. What other paradoxes should we explore next? Let us know in the comments below.